If Beale Street Could Talk by James Baldwin. Starting on page 17. Fanny asked me one Saturday if I could go to church with him in the morning, and I said yes. Though we were Baptists and weren't supposed to go to sanctified church, but by this time everybody knew that Fanny and I were friends. It was just simply a fact. At school and all up and down the block, they called us Romeo and Juliet, though this was not because they'd read the play. And here Fanny came looking absolutely miserable, with his hair all slicked and shining, with a part in his hair so cruel that it looked like it had been put there with a tomahawk or a razor, wearing his blue suit, and Sis had got me dressed, and so we went. It was like, when you think about it, our first date. His mother was waiting downstairs. It was just before Easter, so it wasn't cold, but it wasn't hot. Now, although we were little, and I certainly couldn't be dreaming of taking Fanny from her or anything like that, and although she didn't really love Fanny, only thought that she was supposed to because she had spasmed him into this world, already Fanny's mother didn't like me. I could tell from lots of things, such as, for example, I hardly, I hardly ever went to Fanny's house, but Fanny was always at mine. And this wasn't because Fanny and Frank didn't want me in their house. It was because the mother and them two sisters didn't want me. In one way, as I realized later, they didn't think that I was good enough for Fanny, which really means that they didn't think I was good enough for them. And in, in another way, they felt that I was maybe just exactly what Fanny deserved. Well, I'm dark, and my hair is just plain hair, and there's nothing very outstanding about me, and not even Fanny bothers to pretend I'm pretty. He just says that pretty girls are a terrible drag. When he says this, I know that he's thinking about his mother. That's why. When he wants to tease me, he tells me I remind him of his mother. I don't remind him of his mother at all, and he knows that. But he also knows that I know how much he loved her, how much he wanted to love her, to be allowed to love her, to have that translation read. Mrs. Hunt and the girls are fair, and you could see that. Mrs. Hunt had been a very beautiful girl down there in Atlanta, where she comes from, and she still has, had, has that look that don't you touch me look, that women who were beautiful carry with them to the grave. The sisters weren't as beautiful as the mother, and of course, they'd never been young in Atlanta, but they were fair-skinned, and their hair was long. Fanny is lighter than me, but much darker than they. His hair is just plain nappy, and all the grease his mother put into it every Sunday couldn't take out the naps. Fanny really takes after his father, so Mrs. Hunt gave me a real sweet, patient smile as Fanny brought me out the house that Sunday morning. I'm mighty pleased you come into the house of the Lord this morning, Tish, she said. My, you look pretty this morning. The way she said it made me know what I have must look like other mornings. It made me know what I look like. I said, good morning, Mrs. Hunt. And we started down the street. It was the Sunday morning street. Our streets have days and even hours. Where I was born and where my <clears throat> baby will be born. You look down the street and you can almost see what's happening in the house. Like say, Saturday at 3 in the afternoon is a very bad hour. The kids are home from school. The men are home from work. You'll think that this might be a very happy get-together, but it isn't. The kids see the men, the men see the kids, and this drives the women who are cooking and cleaning and straightening hair and who see what men won't see. Almost crazy. You can see it in the streets. You can hear it in the way the women yell at their children. You can see it in the way they come down out of the house in a rush like a storm and slap the children and drag them upstairs. You can hear it in the, 
in the child. You can see it in the way the men, ignoring all this, stand together in front of the railing, sit together in the barbershop, pass a bottle between them, walk to the corner to the bar, tease the girl behind the bar, fight with each other, and get very busy later with their vines. Saturday afternoon is like a cloud hanging over. It's like waiting for the storm to break. But on Sunday mornings, the clouds have lifted. The storm has done its damage and gone. No matter what the damage was, everybody's clean now. The women have somehow managed to get it all together, to hold everything together. So here everybody is clean, scrubbed, brushed, and greased. Later, they're going to eat ham hocks or chitterlings or fried or roasted chicken with yams and rice and greens or cornbread or biscuits. They're going to come home and fall out and be friendly. And some men wash their cars on Sundays more carefully than they wash their foreskins. Walking down the street that Sunday morning with Fonny walking beside me like a prisoner and Mrs. Hunt on the other side of me, like a queen making great strides into the kingdom, was like walking through a fair. But now I think that it is only Fanny who didn't say a word that made it seem like a fair. We heard the church tambourines from a block away. Sure wish we could get your father to come out to the Lord's house one of these mornings, said Mrs. Hunt. Then he looked at me. <clears throat> then she looked at me. Which church do you really usually go to, Tish? Well, as I've said, we were Baptists, but we didn't go to church very often. Maybe Christmas or Easter, days like that. Mama didn't dig the church sisters, who didn't dig her. And sis kind of takes after Mama, and Daddy didn't see any point of running after the Lord, and he didn't seem to have very much respect for him. I said, we go to Albacena Baptist and looked at the cracks in the sidewalk. This is a very handsome church, said Mrs. Hunt, as though that was the best thing that could possibly be said about it, and that certainly wasn't much. It was 11 in the morning. Service had just begun. Actually, Sunday school had begun at 9, and Fanny was usually supposed to be in the church for that. But on this Sunday morning, he had been given a special dispensation because of me and the truth is too that mrs hunt was kind of lazy and didn't really like getting up that early to make sure fanny was in sunday school in sunday school there wasn't anybody to admire her her carefully washed and covered body and her snow white soul frank was not about to get up and take fanny off to sunday school and the sisters didn't want to dirty their hands on their nappy headed brother so Mrs. Hunt, sighing deeply and praising the Lord, would have to get up and get Fanny dressed. But of course, she didn't take him to Sunday school by the hand. He didn't usually get there. And many times that woman fell out, of, out happy in church without knowing the whereabouts of her only son. Whatever Alice don't feel like being bothered with, Frank was to say to me much later, she leaves it in the hands of the Lord. The church had been a post office. I don't know how come the building had had to be sold or why, come to that, anybody had wanted to buy it because it still looked like a post office, long and dark and low. They had knocked down some walls and put in some benches and put up the church signs and the church schedules, but the ceiling was that awful kind of wrinkled tin, and they had either painted it brown or they had left it unpainted. When you came in, the pulpit looked a mighty long ways off. To tell you the truth, I think the people in the church were just proud that their church was so big that they had somehow got their hands on it. Of course, I was more or less used to Albacena. It was a brighter and had a balcony. I used to sit in that balcony on Mama's knees every time I think of a certain song, Uncloudy Day. I'm back in that balcony again on Mama's knees. Every time I hear blessed quietness, I think of Fanny's church and Fanny's mother. I don't mean that either the song or the church was quiet, but I don't remember ever hearing that song in our church. It always, 
<clears throat> I'll always associate that song with Fonny's church because when they sing it on the Saturday morning, Fonny's mother got happy. Watching people get happy and fall out under the power is always something to see, even if you see it all the time. But people didn't often get happy in our church. We were more respectable, more civilized than sanctified. I still find something in it very frightening, but I think this is because Fonny hated it. The church was so wide, it, it had three aisles. Now, just to the contrary of what you might think, it's much harder to find the central aisle than it, it is when there's just one aisle down the middle. You have to have an instinct for it. We entered that church and Mrs. Hunt led us straight down the aisle, which is furthest to the left, so that everybody from two aisles over had to turn and watch us. And frankly, we were something to watch. There was black long-legged me in a blue dress with my hair straightened and with a blue ribbon in it. There was Fanny who held me by the hand in a kind of agony in his white shirt, blue suit, and blue tie, his hair grimly, despairingly shining, not so much from the Vaseline in his hair as from the sweat in his scalp. And there was Mrs. Hunt, who somehow, I don't know how, from the moment we walked through the, the church doors, became filled with a stern love for her two little heathens and marched us before her to the mercy seat. She was wearing something pink or beige, I'm not quite sure now, but in all that gloom, it showed. And she was wearing one of those awful hats women used to wear, which have a veil on them, which stops at about the level of the eyebrow or the nose, which always makes you look like you have some disease. And she wore high heels too, which made a certain sound, something like pistols. And she carried her head very high and noble. She was saved the moment she entered the church. She was sanctified holy. And I even remember until today how much she made me tremble all of a sudden, deep inside. 